here, scorecontracts.com. This is GovCon's ring day one. Um, it's now 6.20 p.m. Um, fortunately for me, uh, well, I had some technical difficulties and technical difficulties in the beginning. My Mac computer decided it wanted to uh, install some new updates. And so, hence, it put me behind the eight ball and getting started. But nevertheless, I'm here. Um, I went through and I set some things up in the first 13 minutes. And I also, at the same time, I was live, just in case anyone had any questions. Um, so we're back on now. And what we want to talk about today, actually, I want to talk to you about the all-new Small Mentor Publishing Program. That's today's topic. It's the All Small Mentor Publishing Program. And this is one of the ways that, when I talk about growing your business like a hockey stick, this is one of the ways that you can do so. So this program uh, was created by the SBA back in 20, well, I mean, it goes back, um, but probably they've probably been working on it for the last five to seven years. But it was actually implemented back in 2016. They started taking applications in August 2016. So it's just a little over a year now that they started, uh, the rules became effective. I apologize in August. They started accepting applications in October. So it's, it's just about a year now where they start accepting applications. And so what does that mean? Um, the All Small Minister Project Program, essentially, um, when we look at this program here, what it does is, in the beginning, when you have the four categories of small businesses, you have 8A, you have service disabled veteran owned business, you have um, women owned small business, and then you have hub zone. So you got 8A, hub zone, women owned small business, service disabled veteran owned business. So those four categories make up the primary four categories in which you require you to become certified as small business. You can also be a small disadvantaged business, but it, there's no real certification process that you have to go through. So out of the four categories, the only one that really had a mentor protege program was the 8A program. So what is mentor protege program and how does that benefit me? How, how, Eric, what are you, you're talking foreign language. I understand. So let me try and say it um, in layman's terms. Let's say you have a scenario. We know small businesses, right? By the federal definition, small business, and I'm going to click over here to the small, the size standards table, just so you guys can get an idea what I'm talking about. So looking at the size standards table, these are your NAX codes, and this tells you the size standards in terms of millions of dollars and in terms of employees, right? So we scroll down and you look and you find, you know, if you know what your NAX code is, then you can easily determine what your small business size is. All right. So now, stay with me, by the way, here. So here, in this particular scenario, you have um, under new single family housing construction, if you look there, 236115, 236116, you got 36.5 million. What does that mean? That means over an average three year period, your revenues, cannot exceed $36.5 million. So if you add up the three years of your income, then it cannot exceed $36.5 million over that average. So you could essentially do $100 million in three years, and that will take your average around $33.3 million, and you'll still be considered a small business. All right, now if we look at, over here, we look at in terms of manufacturing, their size standards are determined by the employees. So same, same scenario, if we look at um, the number of employees, if your average, your three-year annual average exceeds the 250 number, then you're no longer considered a small business. Anything below that, you're a small business. By the way, I just want to interject. Um, I see some people coming online. If you have any questions, just type it in there, and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. All right? So I just want to say that. Now, moving forward. So how does this relate to the All Small Mentor Project Program? Well, very easily. So what happens in the scenario where you have your small business and let's say you want to go after a large contract, let's say it's a $20 million contract and your company does less than a million a year, you don't meet the prerequisites to even qualify to attempt to go after a $20 million contract. So what happens? And this is the beauty of working in the federal arena. So in the federal arena, in the federal arena, they allow you to do teaming arrangements and joint ventures and to work with companies that are larger than you 
in order to help you accomplish a project that was outside of your reach or that you could not accomplish on your own. And again, I taught in my GovCon Giants course, but all the big companies do this. So when, you, when we're looking at trying to take on a project that is beyond your scope, beyond your skill set, beyond your abilities, but it may be in your backyard, maybe in your neighborhood, you may have some inside information about the project that other people don't have. So you may know um, that this project is coming down the pipeline, and so you have an idea about the project, and you're saying, hey, look, I know how this project, I know what's going on here, they're gonna build some pipes. I'm in, uh, say, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and I'm Bob Construction Company, I do 100,000 a year, and so I know these pipes are coming, right? So let's say this scenario is, you're a small company, you do 100,000 a year. You're Bob, the construction company, Bob the builder, right? You're in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Hey, so um, prolific buyers, how are you today? Um, one second, guys, let's see. Hi, Michigan, do I need to get my contract bill license before I go after government contracts? No, you do not need your contractor's license before you go after government contract. In fact, if you've taken my GovCon Giants course, one of the things that I teach people is originally I encourage you to become a subcontractor and a lot of times what will happen is as a subcontractor the the prime will use their license to secure the contract so there's no reason for you to even have a license other than to show maybe your competency or your ability but I've never uh, no one's ever asked me if I had a contractor's license even though I do possess a contractor's license it's never been a prerequisite on the application for any of my subcontractors, so, uh, for any of my prime contractors asking me as a sub. So that's that's never been uh, an issue. Thanks for the question. So moving back along, and the small mentor protege program, the way it works is you're Bob, you're in Sioux Falls, North Dakota, I mean South Dakota. You want to start working. Um, you know about this project, it's about $20 million project, but you only do 100000 200000 a year. So you're saying to yourself, okay, how can I possibly, you know, go after a $20 million project and my company only does 100000 a year? All right, bingo. That's where the small mentor protege program comes into place. Now, using this program and previous scenarios, what companies do is, they actually will take your company, um, you say your company A, you're Bob the Builder, your company A, and then you'll take a much larger company that's qualified and competent and has the bonding, has the financial resources, has the team, that company, you guys combine together to form what's called a joint venture to pursue that larger opportunity. Again, that's the beauty of working in the federal arena. The federal arena, you could push through as a joint venture or teaming arrangement to go after this much larger project. Okay, so, well, the question then becomes, so, again, what is the mentor protege program for? So, when, they, when you form a joint venture, this is what happens. When you first start the joint venture, if you do $100,000 a year, company A, your bond builder, and then company B, the, the, the big company, does, say, $75 million a year. When you form a joint venture, then you add the two numbers together, your revenue, so 75 million plus 100,000, you get 75 million, 100,000, divided by two, and that becomes the annual revenues of the joint venture. So in that particular scenario, if we were to add up the revenues and divide them by two, you would exceed the $36.5 million size standard that makes you a small business. It's a little difficult, stay with me. I'm, I'm trying to uh, break it down so people can understand. And if anyone's lost or have any questions, again, please send me, um, send me a message. I'm reading the messages as we go. So again, you are company A, you do 100,000 a year. So, and I like my notepad, so I'm gonna break my notepad. So company A, Bob the Builder, right? So Bob the Builder does $100,000 a year. Company B, the, the big guy who can actually do the work, Company B, they do $75 million a year. So if you add the two together and divide it by two, you get 
550,000, something to that effect. That will put you outside a small business standard, which would then disqualify you from bidding on the $20 million opportunity. So how do we get around that? And that's the purpose of today's lesson. That is what the All Small Mentor Protege Program does. Is the All Small Mentor Protege Program is your solution for getting around that. What do you mean? How does that work? So what it does is the, if you form a joint venture, right, and you form a joint venture, let me scroll down so you can see it here, all right, so you have to have an SBA approved joint venture, which I have, um, and then you have to have what's called a mentor protege agreement in place. If you form a joint venture, and then the joint venture forms a mentor protege agreement, so now the joint venture firm and yourself, it's not that you're only, not only going to be working together, the joint, the, the prime contractor company B that does the 75 million a year, they've agreed to mentor you. So if that company B agrees to mentor you along with the joint venture, then what happens is now the joint venture's a size, okay, we're going to go back to size standards. So now the joint venture size becomes the annual revenues of the small certified firm. So in this particular scenario that we're talking about, instead of the $37.5 million, right, the joint venture size would be the $100,000. Now, and the only difference is this particular, you're doing what's called the All Small Mentor Protege Program. A lot of people don't understand this stuff, and so that's why when the, when that's that's one of the reasons why I'm here today is to teach you how to use these things and how to apply them in your businesses. See, the large companies are already doing this; they understand, they they get it, so they understand this very well. So what they do this this if you're looking at it from another person standpoint, hold on one second. Um, so the question is, what if I'm company A and I just formed my LLC a month ago with no earnings yet? Will they reject me for being a protege? Yeah, because they will reject you. Because remember, in order to become, to be company A and to become, you have to be in one of the very small business programs. So you have to become first certified in either HubZone, 8A, woman-owned small business, or service-disabled business. So that is going to be the, the determination of your mentor protege agreement and your joint venture agreement, not actually you being in business for a month. Women owned small businesses can actually um, be in business for only a month and you can become certified as a woman owned small business. That's the only uh, one of the four small business certifications that doesn't require a minimum two year window. Um, so as a woman owned small business, you can start it up tomorrow and go have all your documents in place, register and become certified women owned small business. And then you could then use this strategy to win contracts. All right, good question though. But by the way, if, let me uh, let me say something else. If you start your LLC a month ago, um, then then there's a lot of things that you need to do before you even get to this point. So I would encourage you to go through. I mean, you've got to do your capability statement. You've got to create. You know, you've got to do a government profile. You need to actually learn about doing government contracting anyway. So um, this strategy applies to people who, who are already, um, they're already certified. And I mean, it, it applies to anyone. Anyone can actually take advantage of it. But uh, really, it applies to the companies who are already in the government marketplace who are already certified. And what I would say to them is because a lot of companies, they're, they're 8A, they're hub zone, they're service disabled, and they're not making any money. And they can't figure out why, like, they, you know, they don't know how to make money. So this is one of the ways that they can actually invite uh, larger firms to come in and want to participate with them because they now, this is now a vehicle where they can bring in a large company with unlimited size. It doesn't matter if they do a billion dollars. You can bring in a large multi-billion dollar firm, whoever you can get access to. You can bring in that company and encourage them to want to do business with you because of this program. Now you have a vehicle that you can use to uh, encourage larger firms to start working with you to go after these small business projects because without you, they would not on a normal basis have the ability to pursue these 
um, regular small business projects. Hey Everett, I see you there. Can my daughter be the owner of my business if she's under 18 years old to become a woman of small business? Uh, I think there's age requirements on the small business uh, for the women only. There's probably age requirements on that, so I, I don't believe so. But um, just to be on the safe side, um, you know, you can, you can take a look at it. I can send you the actual link. We can pull it up. In fact, I, I may have the book here, but I'm not. Um, but yeah, the, all that information on the minimum requirements, it's in there. So, but I, I believe she's got to be at least an adult to qualify. Because I know one of the, the criteria that I know offhand for women on small business, one of the criteria is um, you have to be a U.S. citizen, get that 51% ownership, and then also the business has to be your full-time job. So if she's under 18, unless she already graduated from, from school, high school, then she can't prove that this business is her full-time job. That's one of the new criteria because in the past, a lot of people, the women-owned program was a self-certification program. So people would just sign up and they would um, pretend to be women-owned. They would use their wives and daughters and aunts and everybody else. And so they would actually... Um, like have like a front company, right? So the person would be a front for that. But yeah, I would, um, I would, uh, I would say no on that one. That you, your daughter, she couldn't do it. Um, does a twelve day program you email break all that down? Does it break down? No. So the twelve day program, we don't talk about the this all small mentor protege program. And the twelve day course, what we discuss is getting started. In fact, if you're new, the twelve day course is good for you. So we just we go through some of the basics of getting started in the government contracting world. Uh, we talk to you about what it means, what is it, what does it mean to do a federal contract? What does that look like? What does the government buy? What do they buy? And then we start talking to you about strategies and techniques you can use to. They're they're actually in fact the twelve day program is better because these are strategies and techniques that even a new company just starting out you can actually apply. So for for you prolific buyer, I would say. Um, the 12-day program is actually better for you because this is a strategy that you can't that you're not ready for at this point. Um, this is more of a, one of those advanced strategies uh, for companies that are certified but that are looking for opportunities and they don't know exactly what to do or how to do it. So no, I would say uh, yeah, but on the 12-day program course. And by the way, everyone make sure you go through the Go Con Giants course. And the reason why I want you to go through the course again, I, it's a free course. Is because I want you to be educated so that then when you start asking me questions, um, they're not questions that I've already answered in one of my videos before or one of my and one of my course my programs. Um, not that I mind answering them, but I really want to get to the point where we start teaching more advanced strategies to people. I want to get to the point where we start helping people take uh, actionable steps so they can start winning contracts, bidding proposals, and things like that. So I want to build all of you guys up to at least a minimum standard. To where you you know you understand NAX code, you understand PSC codes, SIC codes, you understand uh, your dungeon number. You get past all that those beginning stages, and you start asking more uh, sophisticated things, more uh, higher level uh, questions. So that's what I want to get to, and it, and the reason why I want to get there is because again, remember, my goal is to help 200 companies achieve five million dollars in revenue. So in order for me to do that, I've got to bring everyone up. And bring we got to all bring up together so that we're all talking at you know this at a minimum level right and so that's the idea behind this but yeah so again um, on the small all pro minute all small I'm getting tongue twisted on the all small mentor project program if you are a certified 8A woman owned small business veteran owned small business or you have a friend that has any of these certification listen please tell them. Um, to go and take a look at this, the next week when I'm speaking, I want you to invite your friends to come online and talk to me about how they can use the strategy to actually start winning contracts. I mean, I already went through um, recently and looked at, there's several main talks. Uh, and the main talks are multiple award task award contracts. So they're, they're five-year contracts. They're typically $100 million each. And there's, there's dozens and dozens right now that are out that anyone who's already certified can start using these this particular strategy in place to start winning and applying for some of these MATOC contracts. And then what you'll do is, if you apply under these one of these MATOC contracts, you're going to put yourself in an exclusive pool of contractors 
that for the next five years, only you and those persons in the pool will be bidding those projects. So again, if you have anyone that you know that's any of these, you know, women owned, small business owned, um, I mean, sorry, women owned, hub zone, service disabled veteran, or 8A, if they have any of these certifications and they're not getting contracts, please tell them uh, next Tuesday to come online, let me know who they are, and we can talk to them about, about applying this uh, particular uh, strategy in place. Let me finish answering some of these questions here before we sign off, uh, but I, I, I did want to cover that on the All Small Mentor Pros Program. So we have another question here. So bare minimum, um, yes, so the 12-day course is free. Um, what I would say uh, at the bare minimum is, yeah, I would go through the course first because the course, um, you know, if, if you've already watched some of my videos, the course, what people, some of the feedback that I received, and by the way, we've already had 125 people already go through the GovCon course. Um, and so the course, the reason why a lot of people like it is because it's structured. People are finding me on YouTube and, are, and uh, different, diff whatever you're looking for. People are finding me um, for different avenues. And I know I've made, I don't know, 40 plus videos so far. So it's a lot of people to go through. And they don't know what to watch and which videos that they watch and at what point. So the course is takes you through an actual structured program so that you know like what to do the next step. You know, it's day one. You do, you know, this is what we're talking about. We teach you a lesson. And then after we teach you that particular lesson, I give you a homework assignment to go with it. So we teach you a lesson, and then we give you a, a practical way to actually apply it. And so we, we go through the homework assignment. Now, the the people who are going to benefit the most from this course, the people um, who are going to actually benefit from the course, are the ones who do the action steps. The action, and they don't cost you anything to do. I mean, there, there's not, there's nothing on the course, any action steps that I'm telling you to do that cost money. The only thing they do is they cost time. So you got to invest time to actually do them. Um, so I'm giving you practical steps, tactical tools to do to start learning about the opportunities that you want to pursue and people don't do them. So, so remember, I know that it's free and you didn't pay anything for it, but if you treat it as such and you decide not to take action, then those are the results you're going to get. Uh, let's see. So, what is the route for someone with a job and nothing the desire to work in the space? 12 day program, program cost. Okay, yeah, that's free. Correct. Thank you. Yeah, the course is free. Okay, well, um, so what happens is, yeah, buy the book. The book's going to give you. Um, a list of websites that I use on a day in day out basis. Um, I just made a video talking about the book. So actually, if you watch the video that I made today, I go into details about the Billionaire Playbook. Um, I talked to you about it and, and what it does. Um, but Everett, uh, to answer your question, um, there are programs in place. So for example, if you look at the 8A program, the 8A program is a small business program. So you, one of the criteria is to be uh, disadvantaged, socially disadvantaged. And so by uh, if you're a minority, then you're automatically socially disadvantaged. So they're already you, you don't have to prove social disadvantage. You're already social disadvantaged. South Bronx, 149, got the book yesterday. Hey, thanks for supporting me. Good job. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so Everett, so uh, again, if by being a minority, the 8A program, which by the way, has the most history, the most contracting officers understand it, the most people know. Um, so if you're, if there's any certification that I would encourage someone to get, and I, and by the way, I don't push certifications. I, in fact, I think you should start off becoming a subcontractor before you get any certifications. But if there was any certification that, um, someone said, hey, look, if I'm, I'm going to get a certification, which one should I get? It would be the 8A. And the reason it is because the 8A is where, I mean, they actually call it a license to steal. I mean, that's the nickname. South Bronx, thank you um, for supporting me, by the way. Yeah, so the 8A program is nicknamed License to Steal. And the reason why it's nicknamed License to Steal is because you have these billion dollar companies that are leveraging these programs to win hundreds of millions of dollars of contract 
and they create multiple divisions, multiple entities, and I mean they're they're the ones that are actually sucking up all the contracts. So that's one of the reasons why I say there's opportunity for us, people like you and I out there, because when they when they're they're saying that they're meeting their small business goals, they're using um, a multi-billion-dollar company in the background who has a smaller entity subsidiary below them to help meet their goals. So in the reality, they're not meeting their goals. Um, but nevertheless, uh, you know, I, I it's it's possible. Any one of us can do it. There's opportunities out there. Um, I, I just made a video two days ago where I would actually, I went through this scenario with one of my YouTube subscribers. We looked at an opportunity. Um, he put together a bid. He didn't win the opportunity. But I told him to call the, the person who won, congratulate them, like I teach you on my FedBizOps training. Call them and ask the person if you can, you know, give them a price for doing the work. So um, he didn't do it. So I made a video and I called the guy. And I said, hey, congratulations for winning the award. Um, I see you just won this job. In fact, it's the same job that I helped my YouTube subscriber put a bid together for. And I called the guy and he goes, yeah, sure. He says, yeah, give me a price. So uh, of course, it wasn't for me, it was for my uh, one of my fellow subscribers. So I sent him my guy an email, I go, hey, listen, did you call the award winner? And he's like, no, I didn't call him. I go, well, you need to call him because I just talked to him and he said he's looking for proposals to help do the job. It was a $1.5 million project. And again, so that, going back to what you asked me, prolific buyers, earlier about the book and about the course, if you don't do the activities, how are you going to actually, uh, if you don't apply the stuff that you're learning, then how are you going to get the results that you desire? I mean, they go hand in hand. Um, hey, South Bronx. Yeah, thanks. No, and the, and the book, what I talk about in the book is, the book is essentially, a, uh, if you watch my video today, I don't know if you watched it, I made a video earlier today. And uh, by the way, this is the first time I'm live, J8, one, Javon. So uh, again, like I said, I want to do this every Tuesday and Thursday, start interacting with you guys, because um, I, I need to speed up this process. I'm actually more anxious than you are. I want to see you guys start getting results. And from a lot of the conversations that I'm having on the phone with people, on Skype and things like that, a lot of people are like, they're this far away from getting their first contract. I mean, they're literally that far away. If I had got to them sooner, um, they would have already had a contract because they didn't know what to do at the time, and so they they did nothing. And I, and I mean, I've had people that I've spoken to on the phone that literally uh, the government sent them an opportunity. They sent them an opportunity, like literally, they said, "Hey, we want a price for X, Y, Z," and the guy did nothing. I mean, he he didn't bid it. He was afraid. He was overwhelmed. And so I'm like, when I got him on the phone, I said, "You can't do that. You, you know." You know, find someone to reach out to. And I understand that we don't know who, who to call or talk to. We don't know um, who you can trust and who's out here trying to take advantage of you. So, but I tell them, listen, use me as a resource. And I'm going to say this on camera, live from anyone. If you have an opportunity that the government is soliciting directly to you, you can call me. I promise you, I will stop and take out time to help anyone who has a, an opportunity that was given to them by the government. So, I, I don't want you guys to sit back and say, and not do anything if the government is calling you and asking you for a price on a, an opportunity I want you to take advantage of that so I, I want I, I mean I want to say that in front of everyone um prolific buyers what made you go into steel erection um so uh, steel erection actually uh one of the things I was doing was when I um when I was working as a consultant I knew that I was outgrowing my role in working with this person. They didn't want to actually, um, you know, they they didn't want to grow beyond where we're at. They were comfortable making the money they were making, and I just wanted to see how far I can go. And I knew that I would not be able to uh, be a subcontractor to someone if I didn't have a specific niche market, a specific area that I was going to target. And I, and I tell everyone this because people say, Eric, what should I do? What business? I, I, I don't know. I don't know what business you should do. But I will say this, I encourage people to do businesses that they don't know. Let me repeat that. I encourage you to do a business that you don't know anything about. The reason why, I know that goes against the conventional thought, the conventional wisdom. The reason why is, if you, if you go into a business that you don't know anything about, 
then you will become a manager, you'll become an owner, and you won't become a worker. So you won't be creating a job for yourself and become a self-employed person. You will become a business owner. That's what gives me the leverage and the ability to, to do the things that I do for you guys is because I have teams of people out there working for me every day. And so I'm an owner. I'm a business owner. I'm not a self-employed person where I have to actually be in the field, working, being out there, and make it on a day-to-day -day basis. I have project managers. I have superintendents. I have a whole staff of people that it goes through multiple layers before it gets to me. If something gets to me, then it's really a bad situation. But I mean, I will go a week or a week and a half without ever receiving a phone call from anyone um, regarding, um, you know, something that happened on, a, on an actual job site or a project. So it, there you go, prolific buyers, right like the e-myth, exactly like the e-myth, great. And, that, and that's what it is. So. Uh, going back to, you know, my friends that know how to do the business, right? They know how to do, you know, electrical work or AC work. What I found was that they were stuck in their businesses for 15 and 20 years. So they were actually out there working in their trucks. I mean, I have friends right now today that they've been in business longer than me. They've been doing it longer than me and they have much more experience than I have but they don't even make half the revenue I have. They don't make half the income I make. Because why? Because since you, they know how to fix it, they know how to actually go out there and work on the stuff, whenever there's a problem, they jump right out there and they go and they take care of it. In my case, um, I can't fix any of the steel buildings that I build. So my, my only value is to grow the business, to grow the team, um, to help um, teach the people, to manage people. That's that's the only value that I can really come in and create um, because I can't actually perform the work, which is actually a benefit because it, what it did for me um, was it made me find great teams, great personnel, great people. It made me reach out and stretch myself beyond my comfort zone and have to you know know where I'm good at and what I'm not good at. And it also made me like say, okay, um, I, so what I, I learned how to qualify people, I learned how to qualify um, organizations, I learned how to, to, to kind of fill out who's good and who's not. Um, is the most important thing the 8A? No. 8A is not the most important thing. In fact, 8A is nothing. Um, 8A by far. People try to sell you 8A. People want to charge you $5,000, $10,000 fees to register for 8A. It's not the most important thing. Um, I would tell you not to get 8A. Only time, you know, when you're just getting started, don't get A. Don't get 8A. Because remember, 8A is only a nine-year program. So, so in nine years, everyone that I know, 100%, 100% of the people that I know that have 8A, they didn't learn how to maximize their 8A until the end of the program. So they were already six years, seven years in before they actually understood the value and how to leverage 8A. So what I say to you is learn how to win contracts. Learn how contracts work. If you work as a subcontractor, they're going to give you all the paperwork, all the forms, all the documents. They're going to give you all. Listen, my subcontract agreements that I use they came from the big companies who hired me. I took their same agreements that their attorneys created. They spent thousands, tens of thousands of dollars creating these agreements. I took those agreements and I and I just basically, we call it, you know, let lawyers call it research. I changed the information and I used those same agreements. So the same um, restrictions, covenants, and the laws that they're using for me, right, to hold me in place, those are the same things that I now give to the people who I hire. And I, and I never once hired an attorney to create an agreement for me. So if you start as a subcontractor, all the forms, all the documents, all the information that you need to become an 8A, to become a prime, you're going to get those things from the big companies. They're going to give them to you because those are the documents they're going to ask you to sign. And then that, in turn, you're going to take that same information. And after you know working and you feel comfortable maybe working one year or two years as a subcontractor, then you can go out and get an 8A. And at that point, you're going to understand what it means to have a day, and there you go, Professor Byers, don't reinvent the bill, go with what works. 
Right. So at that point, then you'll understand the importance of 8A, the value of 8A, how to use all these things. You know, you'll, you'll know, for, for example, I'll give you a scenario. I was working on a project uh, last year and the, the people behind me, the company behind me, they were working on a project that was 300 million, right? They were a year behind schedule. And on construction, we have what's called liquidated damages. Liquidated damages were, I think it was three to 4,000 a day. They're a year behind schedule, right? So you do the math, it's still not that much money because it's th you know 300 days, 3,000 a day, it's about a million bucks, right? Not a big deal, right? What happened is, they didn't, the, the company who got the contract failed to put in their schedule uh, rain delays, de delays for weather and things like that. And we're working in Kansas. So they forgot, since they didn't put that into their schedule, they couldn't get credit for it from the contracting officer. So something like that, right? That's where you going into an 8A scenario without having experience you would get, that's a million dollar difference because of something so, so something as a, as creating a schedule that allowed for your delays, which are standard. And I mean, and the FAR, which is, you know, you know federal acquisition regulations, you're allowed certain days for liquidated damage, I mean, for um, delays. But because they forgot to include them in their schedule, they couldn't get credit for them on the back end. That's just one example of why I tell people, don't jump into 8A because there's a lot of things that you don't know that you don't understand, um, and you can you can get yourself in a lot of trouble before you even get started. So you know before be, just don't just jump in because you 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 haven't seen all these different scenarios. I mean I've seen them. I've I've been a part of them. Um, now that's a negative. But let me tell you a positive. About it. I don't want to leave you guys with just a negative scenario. In a positive scenario, we were doing a contract, and uh, let's say for example the hurricane came. So right now we've got all these natural disasters. We've had three hurricanes in the last several months. I'm here in Florida, and and so we had you know multiple hurricanes, and then you know what happened in Puerto Rico. So before the hurricane, I was working on a project at a military base, and uh, we had equipment on the job. We were doing the project, we awarded the project, and before we got started, the military asked us to to consider an alternative proposal. They wanted we were building a fence for the government, so they wanted a fancier fence, like a, a more stylish fence. So we had already put our people out there, put our teams out there, put our equipment, everything out there. And they said, hey, look, before you guys get started, we want another, we want a fence. Uh, we want a different design. Now, mind you, we already spent six months going through the first design. So in, uh, in that particular scenario, um, we went through, we spent three or four months going back and forth with the government about this new design. At the end of the day, the new design was double the cost. They didn't have the budget and they had to go back with the old design. So what happened? Well, what we did, we actually took and we got what's called an equitable adjustment. What is an equitable adjustment? We were able to charge the government monies for delaying our contract. And they were they actually paid us over and above our contract for the delays that they caused by making us go through this exercise of three months with equipment sitting on site and people sitting on site and things like that. So that's another scenario where, I mean, that's a positive situation where, again, if you've never been in these situations, you don't understand how stuff goes, and you could be losing money and opportunities at every turn. So, yeah, get the experience first before you decide to become an 8A. Everett has a question. Not understanding what value I can bring to a larger company, having no experience in the industry. Can you speak the basic needs a person should have in place, credit, money? All right, what value can you bring to a larger company? Well, um, that's a very good question, Everett. In fact, I, uh, I have a video coming out, probably be out next week, that I talk about that. But I'll answer it since you asked the question. Um, the value that you can bring to a large company, simple. If once you understand how to win government contracts, this is like kind of like a, set, a science, right? So once you understand the science of winning government contracts and you start to learn about doing these things, right? Now, there are companies out there all over America they do $30 million, $40 million, $50 million, $60 million a year, and they want to get into the federal marketplace, and they don't know how to do it. So what is the value you bring? You, same scenario I gave you in the very beginning. You find an opportunity that only, you know, as a small business can do, 
and then you approach that company with that opportunity as to be your joint venture partner and your mentor partner in that particular opportunity because they couldn't get it without you. They're not a small business. And then you create a joint venture and a mentor project program agreement in place to pursue the, the $20 million, $30 million, or whatever the opportunity is. It doesn't, you have no value if you're looking at $50,000 contracts because a large company doesn't want a $50,000 contract. In order to start leveraging working with the large firms, you got to look at contracts that are multi million dollars. And I tell people it's the same paperwork. I, I know it seems crazy, but it, it's literally the same paperwork. Um, I did real estate before I did construction. And I remember when I was going through all my training in real estate, they would say, the same contract you signed to sell a $6 million house is the same contract that you signed to sell a $60,000 house. Same contract. The same forms, the same application, the same. You get the same kind of deed, you get the same kind of title. Six million, you know, versus sixty thousand. Um, drop ship. So, um, how do I explain that? And government, we, you know, they use different terms. Um, I know what you mean when you say drop ship. Everything that we sell to the government is drop ship because since I'm not a manufacturer, I don't actually make anything. And since the majority of us, well, in America, there's not a whole lot of manufacturers, period. So mostly everything that you will sell the government is drop ship to them, if that makes any sense. Um, that's actually one of the, the, the issues that one of my uh, subscribers had where he didn't respond to the government because he believed he had to actually manufacture these particular products to give to them. And I told them the government didn't, they didn't require they don't require that of anyone. I mean, if they're asking you to provide a product, as long as it meets the specifications and requirements, they don't care where it comes from. Does that answer your question, South Bronx? Yeah. So Everett, um, going back to you, yeah. Um, you don't need credit. You don't need money. Um, I've spoken about this before in the past. You can do this without credit. In fact, I said this in one of my videos a few weeks ago. Uh, I've never, my credit score has never been above 670. Um, I've started uh, actually, I, I've started twice. I started once, uh, first time I started doing government contracts was after the recession in the real estate. And then the second time I got, I started again was after I was, um, I had a judgment against me for $220,000 because I had a bad company sue me and I couldn't defend myself. So the second time that I got started doing contracts was after working in the private sector and losing about a half a million dollars with a judgment against my name, I was able to still able to get contracts. All right. Um, let's see, Chloe Byers, I drive a truck, not a town constantly. Can I train and delegate to a VA? No, no, you, you're going to have, um, you're going to have to make time to learn how to do this stuff because you can't. You can, you can, yes, I mean, I have virtual assistants. I have several of them, but you have to be able to train them what to do. So it would be hard for you to do that until you actually understood this stuff yourself. And a lot of the, uh, when you go through the 12-day uh, course, a lot of the, what you'll see is people, um, you, you, have to, you have to go out and do things. You have to talk to people. You have to meet people. So you can't delegate meeting people to a virtual assistant. All right, I got it. But how can Joe blow up a street? Talk to the right people in large company about business on this level. It's answering a toilet program. How do I sign up for a 12-day? All right, so the 12-day program, I mean, if you go to any of my YouTube uh, videos and click in there, or if you subscribe to my um, South Score Contracts, you'll get a link to it. But on, on the, in all the show notes and all my YouTube videos is the 12-day uh, course. It should, it should be in there somewhere. Uh, but I, let me see if I can send it to you if I have it here. I might can send you the link while we're talking. If my stupid computer works right. Um, now, how can Joe blow off the street, talk to the right people in a large company about business on this level? Well, that's uh, actually a lot easier than you think. So one of the things, I read a, another book. It's called Networking with Millionaires. And one of the things it talks about is uh, when, you, when you're looking at networking with millionaires, the place to find them is at trade shows and conventions. 
So if you want to meet, you, you, you're not going to be able to walk into someone's office and meet these people. But whatever industry you're in, all of the owners, all of the senior management, all the people that make decisions go to trade shows. So whatever industry you're in, whether it's steel buildings, I mean, I, I you know, whether it's uh, trucks or parts or equipment, if you find an industry trade show, at the trade show, there's going to be award show. There's going to be the top companies who won the awards last year are going to be there. The companies who are helping celebrate their friends who won awards, they're going to be there. So if you find, if you go to any industry in the world, doesn't matter what it is, healthcare. I've been to health and fitness club industries. Uh, I've been to salon and hair shows. If you go to any trade show, the top company is going to be there. The CEO is going to be there. The people in those industries are going to be there. So if you want to meet the people in a large company, Go to an industry trade show and all the people that you want to meet will be there. And if you start, if you get truly get a grasp on this information and you learn how to do this stuff, um, you can speak with a lot of confidence and you can walk into any trade show and say, hey, listen, you know, my name is Everett Meadows and I actually, um, I, I win government contracts and I want to help. I'm looking for the right partner, the right team, someone to help. Um, that wants to go further and wants to do more, who wants to get into the sector. And I want to work with them, bring them on and show them what I know and leverage them so we can all win contracts. And everyone wants money. Everyone everyone wants more money. I don't care who it is. Does Google want to make more money? Does Facebook want to make more money? Does Snapchat want to make more money? Everybody wants more money. So I don't care if they do $100 million, $50 million, $80 million. They all want more money. In fact, I worked on a project uh, three or four years ago with the company, they did 100 million a year. And when I told them that I was applying, I didn't even have 8A. When I said I was applying for 8A, they approached me with the opportunity. They said, listen, we're looking for people that we can partner with to go after this stuff. We, we have $8 million in contracts right now that we're looking to put in someone's hands. And if I had my 8A certification at the time, they would have literally handed me $8 million in contracts. So, uh, you know, a lot of times people think that this stuff is hard, but you'll be surprised who's actually already looking for this. Their companies already want to know how to get into government contracts and they don't know how to do it. So, um, what else? Anybody else? Anybody else? I'll give you guys another like maybe one minute. <laughs> Did you, you know it's funny I've never seen war dogs um, but uh, from what people have described to me yeah we, we we're, we're uh, I'll tell you a story uh, prolific buyers let me tell you a story real funny it's funny because war dogs uh, yeah I heard it's a good movie um, but I've never watched it but I, I guess I, I need to check it out because people always tell me about this so let me tell you guys a funny a story because uh, I, I spoke a few weeks ago down in um, Miami. I was speaking, uh, actually I was in Fort Lauderdale speaking to a group of people about doing federal contract. And I'm sure all you guys remember the, the $300 million Puerto Rico contract. Everybody was upset about it. They said the guy, you know, the senator's son or somebody like that got the contract in Puerto Rico for $300 million. So uh, a few years ago, I was uh, consulting and partners with the company, and we were, they were veteran-owned small business. This is in 2012 or 2014, one of those two years. I, was, I don't remember it was an even number, so it was either 2012 or 2014. I think it was 2012. We won a MATOC, which is a five-year contract. Um, MATOC, Multiple Award Task Order Contract, that's what it stands for. I'll type it so you guys know what I mean. So we want we want a May talk, and the May talk, it was for the VA hospitals, and South is called South May talk. So that included the VA hospitals in West Palm Beach, Miami, and Puerto Rico. The company who um, was on the May talk, who I worked with, um, we did a lot of products together. They only had five employees, and the value of the May talk was one hundred million dollars. I don't, I don't think you guys heard me. It was $100 million. Right. 
this way. Okay, so that was the value of the main top. And the owners were, they looked like me, right? They're the same color as me. Uh, in fact, one was, one of the kids was like 29 years old, and then his father was like 50 something years old, and then it was an aunt and a company. And so, guess what? We didn't get any media attention, we didn't get any press attention, we didn't, get, we didn't make the news, we didn't make any headlines. And we were on a, a vehicle that was $100 million. And, and, and if you guys want, the next time that I, I can sign on and we can go live, I'll, I'll bring it. I'll show you guys what it is so you can see for yourself um, what it was. But, yeah, we were on that vehicle for $100 million. And we got no media attention. But guess what? We couldn't get bonding in Puerto Rico. So, um so we couldn't get bonding in Puerto Rico. So guess what? We actually never did a single project in Puerto Rico. Even though we were on a pool of contractors to do projects there, uh, the bonding requirements were different than they were in the United States. And so we only one company was actually, out of all the pools, like, I think it was like 12, 15 companies. Out of all the 12 to 15 companies, there was only one firm that had the ability to get bonding in Puerto Rico, and they did all the projects. So um, I just want to share that with you guys to let you know that there's all types of possibilities out here. You, you know, that scenario where the two people want a, a $300 million contract is not, that's not uh, a unicorn. That's the norm. The government spends about $1.5 billion. And so, um, since they spend about $1.5 billion a day, $300 million is is a, is a drop in the bucket. It's just change. All right. So, I just want to share that with you guys to let you know um, that these are not, uh, these these are more common occurrences, and there's there's places that you can go, and you'll learn that if you go through my 12 day course, I show you a website that you can use to learn about all the contracts that are being awarded to companies that over seven million dollars. So every day there's a list of contracts being awarded to companies that exceed seven million, and they go out every single day. And when you go and you start seeing the list, and you see you just see the amount of money being spent by our government, you'll realize that $300 million was, was nothing. So it was more of a political stunt than anything else. But all right, guys, uh, it doesn't look like um, I have any more questions. So I'm going to go ahead and sign out, and I will see you next Tuesday.